Nutsaw Connection Podcast Network viewers and listeners, welcome into Dirty War Wrestling Above Replacement. I am JT. Joining me as always is my buddy Marcus. Marcus, how are you? Good man, jazzed up after uh, we have a new number one uh, over the course of this project, man. So I'm excited to uh, keep the momentum rolling. Yes, sir. We had big news last episode. And right here on this very show, we are breaking down every WWE pay-per-view in history one by one on a plus minus above or below replacement level schedule. If you're watching on YouTube, we welcome you in. Be sure to subscribe while you're here. If you're not already, leave us a comment or a like below. If you're listening on our podcast uh, network, any podcatcher app, North South Connection, we appreciate you being there as well. Just get subscribed to both. And then you can either listen, you can watch on YouTube. We actually have some exclusive content that's video only. So if you check that out, you'll only get the, uh, if you subscribe there, you'll get all the stuff that's video only. So check it all right marcus on this show here we're going through every pay-per-view in a seasonal format that means we start every season with the show after wrestlemania and it ends with wrestlemania the calendar year following so this season started with backlash 2001 it will end at wrestlemania 18 as you mentioned we have a new number one in this project last episode we uh deemed summer 2001 to be the best pay-per-view we have watched to date and we'll see how long it stands Everything we do here is based on a plus, minus, above, or below replacement level. If you think of replacement level as absolutely average, most average match you can get, average promo, average crowd. If we like something better than average, we give it a point. If we like something less than average, we take away a point. We net all that out, and it gives us a total score. We also grade every single match we watch. Uh, we use two and a half as our replacement level score. So same thing. We take our combined grade of the match. and If it's above two and a half, it gets that. Below two and a half, we subtract away. Net all that out into one total grade as well. Add everything up. That gives us our final total score. And then we stack rank every single pay-per-view that we've ever done. So I think it becomes more clear as you watch or listen. Uh, so we'll get through it. But uh, Marcus, do you want to tell us the categories that we break down for this? Absolutely. Uh, we start off with build, followed by commentary, the atmosphere, notable moments and importance, match grades, card structure, rewatchability, and all-time matches. And JT, anything... Uh, for us to be an all-time match, for it to be a plus, it is a uh, 4.25 and above uh, that we both agree on. And for it to be a minus, it is anything we both agree is 0.75 and below. Okay. All right. So why don't we continue on through the 0102 season? We're going to get into Unforgiven 2001. Took place September 23rd from the Mellon Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 13,855 in attendance, 350,000 buys. Pretty uh, well-known pay-per-view in, in some levels. It's the first pay-per-view, first major show after 9-11, uh, which is a pretty big deal. And, of course, as we'll see, that I'll play into uh, the night ahead as well with some of the, the approach that they take. This is a big day for me, too. So if you recall, after 9-11, the NFL took the weekend off. Um, this is their first weekend back. I actually went to the Jets-Patriots game uh, earlier that day. And it's actually a pretty famous Jets Patriots game, Marcus. Do you remember why? Don't. Any guess? September twenty third, two thousand and one. Is this the first home opener for Mr. Thomas Edward Brady? This is the game that Drew Bledsoe got injured. Okay. Yeah. Mo Lewis destroyed him on the sideline. <laughs> took him out. <laughs> Tom Brady did make his debut in the game. The Jets won ten to three. Uh, little that I know, I'd be witnessing the beginning of two decades of torture for myself <laughs> live in the building that day. But it felt good when the Jets won. Uh, so me and my buddy Charlie from college, we went to that game. Uh, by the time we got home, I think it might have been a four. So by the time we got home, um, we turned on our black box in our dorm and watched the replay of Unforgiven. Uh, so we got home from the game, settled in, and then we're up from like 11 to 2 or whatever watching the replay of, of Unforgiven. Uh, so it was a, a pretty cool day. You know, coming off a pretty solemn couple of weeks across the board post 9-11. Uh, Jim Ross and Paul Heyman are in the booth, just like they were at SummerSlam, which is also a big plus. We have a Sunday Night Heat match as Billy Gunn defeats Tommy Dreamer. So Tommy continuing to scuffle after his big debut. And again, we have a night full of Alliance versus WF. Not really any kind of system. We talked about this at SummerSlam. A little bit of invasion. Like, what is the end game of all this? We just have matches between the sides. There's nothing, you know, stakes in place. What are we battling for? Who cares who wins? Um, so we'll see as we go. But we do start pretty hot. We have a four-way tag team match for the WWF tag team titles. As the Dudley boys defeat Big Show and Spike Dudley, the Hurricane, and Lance Storm. 
and the Hardy Boys. Uh, Hurricane is the former Shane Helms, who had leaned into being a big comic book fan. He had the Hurricane tattoo. Uh, I think it was in the famous Austin Appreciation Night, where right where Austin kind of points out the tattoo and pushes him toward thinking he's a superhero. I believe it happens during that big promo before Mega yeah. Mania, the night after SummerSlam. So he starts teaming with Storm. Um, big show, kind of ambling around still to just stick him a spike in this tag team match here. They go 14 and a half minutes. I went three stars. Perfectly fine, acceptable tag team opener. Get the crowd hyped up. You got some stars in there. I liked it. Yep, same for me. Uh, went with the score three. Establish acts. Cool to see the Hardy Boys back together. Um, always good when they're mixing it up with uh, the Wizards of the Wicked Wood. Um <laughs> <laughs> Our next match uh, is Saturn taking on Ross Raven. Uh, Saturn picks up the win. Of course, this is centered around uh, Raven just kidnapping Moppy and destroying Moppy and also taking uh, taking that she-devil uh, Terry with him as well. Uh, 2.25 for me. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I guess the invasion helped Raven have a little bit more life in him <laughs> through this. Saturn gets the win. Saturn really... He was entertaining fodder, but he had really dropped like a C level guy um, yeah. on TV. You know, it was with Terry that was fun early in the year when Terry and him were kind of nasty, and then he ends up, you know, falling in love with the mop because he gets too many concussions. And you're welcome. Uh, ends up beating Raven here though, and the explosion, <laughs> the explosion of the flock. All right, up next is our first ever pay per view match between Edge and Christian. Christian defeats his brother to win the Intercontinental Title. This kind of felt like it fell right in line with the other big, like kind of disappointing, great tag teams break up and have their first match and should have more chemistry than they have. Uh, the old Sean and Marty will have another one coming in the season later. Uh, I liked it. I went three stars, but I think you'd be disappointed, right? Coming into this hype, hoping like, oh, Edge versus Christian, this is going to be great. They get the chemistry. They get the, um, they've been building toward this their whole lives as best friends. So it kind of felt like this would be, um, a really big time match, but ends up being disappointing. Christian uses a chair, goes low to win. Um, three stars. It was fine. Yeah, it's a little bit of a struggle too because you're breaking up both of these guys, and both guys are trying to get over. And of course, they're leaning towards Edge, but this is also Christian's big break too as a singles act um, and getting to be heel. Um, a 3.25 for me. I don't know if these guys have it. In, in their skill set yet to really like make the most of this opportunity. Um, but it, it's a tough position. It's so they really not have broken position. them up. You think was it too early to break them up? Cause it doesn't feel so. like it. You think so? I, th I think it's, I think it's too early. I think, I don't know. You could have, if you're going to break them up, you're, you're already in September. Like why not do it build to WrestleMania and, and, and yeah. do it there? Like, did they have to split them September. though? Could they have just kept them together as singles? Like, did they have to turn Christian heel? I don't. I don't think you know. You can still have them as a package, but have them doing single stuff, and you can have the jealousy brewing as like Edge is stepping forward as a you know uh, a top guy for the WWF, and Christian's kind of like falling back in the mix, um, and have that brewing, and then build to you know Rumble or something like that. But uh, three point two five for me uh, is cool. Getting to see a uh, Christian surprised? singles match here. Edge already lost the IC title. Like it definitely felt quick after SummerSlam. I know, I know the titles are ping ponging anyway, but yeah, it felt like it had to happen in order to not completely ruin Christian. Like I feel like if Edge picks up the win here, then like Christian's pretty doomed. It's right. like you know, talent always finds a way is the the old saying, but it would have been really hard for Christian. I think um, you know taking a loss to edge and not having the intercontinental title and he's in the Alliance and he's just kind of another guy at that point. Um, we have another title match JT as uh, it chronic, is for chronic, the chronic, 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 chronic. <laughs> the WCW tag team titles is the undertaker and Kane successfully defending against the debuting chronic, 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 chronic accompanied chronic. by Stevie Richards. Um, not the train wreck I was mm. anticipating. 1.75, so well below replacement level, but um, not even sniffing all time bad. Um, no, just I, 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 yeah. long. I was a chronic fan in WCW, like I really oh, liked too. Um, yeah. So I was pretty hyped when they brought him in because they were like pretty cool in WCW. They were positioned well, they were pushed well. 
Um, they come in here, of course, they get you know the Taker Buddy label, right? So they get the instant pay per view match for the titles. The Stevie thing is seems random, but actually, I guess there is like background because Undertaker and Kane had destroyed the right to censor and ended them over the summer. Uh, so this is Stevie trying to get revenge on Undertaker for disabling his team. Um, and I thought this had promise. Like, this is actually a guilty pleasure match for me. Like, I kind of liked the concept of it. I thought maybe it was a good chance to have like a good Haas match. And it, it just felt similar to SummerSlam, but Taker and Kane pretty much just beat him down and wipe him out. And they're done. This is it. They were on the week before and then this. And they're cooked. Um, the match is sloppy. There's a lot of missed strikes. Uh, notoriously, Undertaker sandbags his buddies after the match and blames them. So they got assigned to Heartland Wrestling Association. Brian Clark quit. He didn't want to take the demotion. Adams went. I think he stays for a little bit, and then he leaves. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, for some of the scrubs they had ticking around the roster at this point, like, they couldn't have kept these dudes and given them a couple more weeks to see if they could figure it out. Like, they kind of got thrown in at the last minute to this match. They didn't really get put in there with charismatic workers at this point. So it's like, right. they probably deserved maybe a little bit better of a chance. And from what I saw, like, when they're in there with Kane... It's yeah. it it's kind of like a like almost a, a approaching dudes rock territory like right. it's big moves there's slams um but like their selling is not there they kind of like wrestle like right. video game characters and like, WCW guys that, that's everything WCW toward the end is clunky and yeah. sloppy but it kind of just works for them because they were like badasses and cool and I mean they basically have like a fucking weed gimmick before like weed gimmicks you know what i mean so it's like whatever so it was like it was kind of cool in 1999 2000 to see these guys out there it also felt like they were delivering on promise finally like wrath had been a guy that like everyone wanted them to get behind for years and they finally kind of did here with this gimmick so it just it felt like something it could have been something and they pulled the plug way too soon yeah. um but with you it's 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 not the dud it has a reputation for. It's I went one and three quarters as well. It's not great, but there's some like decent little stuff in there. Um, it's just a little too plotting. And like I said, there's some missed strikes in there. They go 10 minutes, feels like a half hour, which is never good. Yeah, I mean, you can look at where they run out of gas. It's like the seven minute mark. Like yeah. you just ended the match there. I mean, it's probably not too far below replacement level. Yeah. All right. Up next, we have Rob Van Dam defeating Chris Jericho. A uh, very good match. A bit of a dream match for sure. This is a cool feud for the fall. Jericho coming off the big win at SummerSlam. Uh, gives it back here to RVD to balance it out. I remember I saw this at a house show in Worcester a couple weeks before this. Um, and they had a really good match there too. I think at the time, some people were disappointed. Um, they have one a year later in 2002 that's more disappointing than this, I think. I still, Looking back at it though, I think it's, it's actually really good. I went four stars. Um, I think historically, I probably didn't rated enough as well as I should have um, looking at it. So I think RVD getting the win shows that they're behind him in a rocket push. They're starting to make hints that he has aspirations beyond the Alliance at this point, and it's going to play a big role on our next show. Um, so they're really starting to get behind him. They get Stephanie and the, the bombs in there again to get our, you know, she's kind of flirting up RVD, trying to get him to do what Rhino couldn't do at SummerSlam. And mm-hmm. uh, RVD kind of gives her the, I got it, I got it, don't worry about it, but she ends up showing up anyway. Um, so good match continues the Jericho Stephanie stuff as well. Yeah, it, it's a, a match that like succeeds at serving many masters because you got like Jericho continuing like his his trek towards the main event, like holding down the upper mid card. You've got RVD still establishing himself, but he's a big time player. Uh, and then you got like the Stephanie McMahon stuff. And then like it's also like hardcore stuff on top of this. So a lot of moving pieces and, um, you know, uh, Jim Ross says it's a five star match. Um, I went 4.25. Um, but it's some brutal contact. And this also reminded me that this is in that stretch where um, RVD is like <laughs> hard way people mm-hmm. every week on TV, um, catch them with his feet. Um, I really need to get their hands up. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this was, this is a really good match. Um, and Van Dam continues to, uh, to impress here. Uh, that takes us to the WCW title match, and it is The Rock taking on and defending against Booker T and Shane McMahon uh, in a handicap match. I went with a 3.5 as well, um, pretty much a run back of the SummerSlam match. Um, Shane doesn't take away from anything. I don't think he really adds uh, too much either. Um, and The Rock, like he's, he's The Rock, man. Um, he's as good as he ever was uh, coming back from uh, 
from Phil and Scorpion King. Yeah, I haven't talked about it too much yet, but because this is really the first pay-per-view of my senior year um, in college, but I was so dialed in. Like, my roommates, there were six of us in the room. Four of us were, like, all in on wrestling. We watched Raw. We watched SmackDown. We had the black box, watched every pay-per-view. We had fucking matches in the dorm when we were drunk. Um, like, just everything beyond the mat. We watched that a hundred times. Like, we were just ensconced in pro wrestling during this one year. I was directing the TV station at college, and all I did was, like, have my friends in and, like, make wrestling references the whole time. Like, that's all it was. We were so dialed in during this stretch. And it culminated at WrestleMania where we had a huge um, – it was St. Patrick's Day. So we had a big St. Patrick's Day WrestleMania party with our like dorms filled watching the show. So it's just like an awesome stretch for me. Yeah. Um, nostalgically through this. I also had a buddy of ours that was uh, would come hang out with us, watch the shows. His dad worked for Castrol, which is a big sponsor at the time. Yeah. And I remember he came in one day with this big box of merch, um, WDF merch that they gave him. So I got a WCW hat. I got oh, the action, Dirty Action VHS, which is an awesome compilation of the first half of 01. If you haven't seen it, it's like one of my favorite tapes slash DVDs of, all, uh, DVDs of all time. And I also got the Unforgiven 01 t-shirt. And I bring it up because Sweet. I had Austin and Angle and then Rock, Shane, and Vince. I mean, uh, Rock, Shane, and uh, Booker on the bottom. Um, and I love that shirt. I wore it all the time. It was like an awesome looking shirt. It's a cool logo. So it, it irrationally makes me like this match is where I'm going because they're on the shirt that I got for free um, during a time where I was just really obsessed with the product. Um, so Rock wins, beats Shane and Booker. I love Shane during the stretch. Um, again, I liked the Rock Booker feud quite a bit too, even though Booker gets washed twice by him. But Shane takes the loss here at least, which I think helps protect Booker a bit. So I thought it was a good way to go about it. So three and a half for me. I dig it. Um, all right. We uh, get one more match here between the title matches this time. It is Rhino defeating Tajiri. Uh, the U.S. title was on the line in this match, and um, Rhino wins that belt. So pretty big win for him, bouncing back off for SummerSlam. It shows they still have plans uh, for him in the alliance to be a big-time player. I went two and a half. I'll say I was a little disappointed. I think they just had a tough slot late in the night after The Rock before Austin and Angle. I think they would have done better if they put this earlier Um I, I would have put it maybe even second or third. You could have stuck Saturn yeah. or Raven here. It was going to be a death match anyway um, with the crowd. So I would have stuck that late in the show for five minutes. And I would have had these guys get a better slot out of the gate. Yeah, I completely re- agree with the restructuring of uh, this match in the card. Um, so I totally like this is a Mandela effect for me. In my brain, the last that we see of Rhino until he comes back on SmackDown in 03 is um him in the walls of jericho at SummerSlam. i i thought like i saw a ghost here like what is he doing here i i was positive he was already out with the neck fusion um but it's gonna be right after this right because i mean he's gone by survivor series well we'll we'll cover out our neck (laughs) the next show we do um at no mercy he pops up as well um but uh 2.75 for me um so our main event of the evening, it is the uh, big homecoming. It is Kurt Angle taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin. And uh, Angle is going to pick up the win. What? Uh, in controversial fashion a little bit. What? Um, I went with a 4.25. Not what? Little girlfriend, what? Uh, not as good as the uh, SummerSlam match. But mm-hmm. um, given like the hometown stuff, the family at ringside, he really gets like the Bret Hart in Canada style yeah. treatment. Um, and like, especially with like what just happened in the country, yeah. like yeah. Th- this was like, you know, putting smiles on faces. It was done uh, really well. And, uh, you know, we do get a bit of the controversial finish that, it, you know, we probably should have got at SummerSlam, um, you know, to get the title switch back on raw, um, and back on Austin. But for the night, I mean, this was exactly what was needed. Four and a quarter for me. Um, it's still really good. I think it suffers based on the expectations from SummerSlam. That was magic in a bottle. You just weren't going to recreate. But you're right. The crowd carries it. The hometown vibe. The 9-11 vibe. All-American Kurt Angle. Uh, it's also the build to this was iconic. Because you had the Austin Appreciation Night the night after. It gets interrupted by Milkomania, which is, like, incredible. And then the belt, uh, the bridge stuff is all there in this, too, right? Mm-hmm. All that. So, like, yeah. it's some really iconic build for this feud. Um and it's still great. I mean, they beat the shit out of each other. It's just as intense. Um, I think it's just overlooked because SummerSlam is so great. It's it's almost like, I think of it as like almost a Savage Warrior, like SummerSlam '92, like we loved and it's mm-hmm. awesome. 
but it's just not WrestleMania seven, right? Right. So like that's that hurts a little bit. This is not that, but it's still great. It's just not that. Um, you know, I don't know if Angle was supposed to win here or not. Like, did they give it to him because of nine eleven in the moment, or do you think he was always supposed to win? And because Austin gets it back like a couple weeks later. I mean, yeah this this feels like them maybe doing a solid. You know, like calling an audible, putting smiles on faces, that whole thing. Um, it feels weird though. They, they beat angle twice though. And the way they have the finish with the foot on the ropes, maybe it was planned because it is his hometown. Um, I guess angle did technically win at SummerSlam. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows. Gonna, yeah. Maybe they were never going to do the solid switch. Maybe they were going to have the decision be reversed. Dusty finish or something. Yeah. If anyone knows, like if it's ever been talked about on any podcast or anything, Austin's or Pritchard or something like that, let us know. Um, I'm curious if it was. I've always wondered if it was the plan or not. If they if they changed it because of 9/11, um, and because Angle gets the big celebration, the Bret Hart with the family in the ring celebration, um, which is cool. But yeah, Austin, he's got it back by no mercy. So, uh, but really cool moment that they can't take away, no matter what they do. So Marcus, that brings us to a total score of five. So very strong in ring show. Based on our metrics, let's get to our categories. Uh, for build, we give a point for the ramping up of Austin Angle. We get the what stuff we just talked about. Appreciation Night, which is an all-timer. Milkamania, Fighting on the Bridge, the pile driver on the floor was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so plus two for all that. It's all fantastic stuff. A point for uh, Shane Helms turning into the Hurricane. A point for Edge and Christian finally breaking up and setting up their feud. A point for Stevie Richards bringing in Chronic as revenge for the RTC. A point for RVD Jericho being put into a workhorse match. Stephanie trying to take out Jericho, but it's being set up as just two of the workhorses of the, the war. Uh, a point for a good build for Rock and Booker, kind of playing on Booker feeling disrespected in comparison to The Rock. So a lot of good build to the show. Yeah, and a standout moment for the build for me, it's on SmackDown, and I forget what Austin does to Angle. I can't remember if it's the Pillmanizer, and then he takes him up the ramp too, mm -hmm. um, and then Angle picks the ankle, um, yep. and he has Austin the ankle lock You know, while he's hurt too, um, like being stretched out or whatever. It is incredible television. Mm -hmm. um, for our minuses, we've got uh, the random combo, the, the, uh, the tag teams, the four-way tag, I uh, felt clunky getting those tag teams in there. It didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, we got Raven murdering poor, poor Moppy uh, after Saturn chose Moppy over uh, that little she devil Terry. Sense is there would make no sense unless you knew 2001. <laughs> yeah. But that's on that action tape. Have you ever seen that DVD or that tape? No, no. Oh, you got to find it. It's it's so good. It's if you love 01, you'll be as happy as as anything. It's it literally covers like like January to like. I think the, maybe the kickoff of the invasion in there somewhere, but it's all just the best stuff that they did through that whole run. It's got all the classic Austin and angle stuff and the McMahon stuff. It's, I watched that tape a million times. Um, I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, so, all right. So that's a plus five for build. So well-built show. Uh, let's go on with the commentary. We give it a point for uh, Heyman stick for hurricane, you know, flying higher than a highest building, whatever the hell he does, the whole Superman <laughs> stuff. A uh, point for Heyman being the hype man for the Dudleys. He carries that with credibility. A point for doing a really good job explaining the history between Saturn and Raven. Uh, and Heyman makes a funny line. About Jay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know. You didn't watch Nitro. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, uh, Heyman has a, a killer line. He says, Sergeant Slaughter must be rolling over at his grave. <laughs> Fucking guys backstage. Uh, that's a great line. Uh, Heyman is fantastic. Like, so we gave two points for the bickering all night. Him just doing classic Bobby Heenan double talk, you know, shitting on the faces, but then defending the heels, doing the same stuff, just all kinds of things like that. A uh, point for JR using the ECW history to establish RVD as a star. A point for Ross really doing a great job explaining Austin's paranoia and his in-ring ability while they also being disappointed in his decision. So he's walking away, he's trying to get counted out, but at the same time saying, like, this guy's an all-time great. You know, why is he doing this? Here's why he's obsessed. And like, he just does a nice job telling that whole package. Yeah. Um, these guys are definitely in their bag on this night. Um, yeah. Because our only minus is uh, them being, well, really, JR, being uh, una un unable to understand or fathom uh, the, the uh, Tajiri and Tori relationship because it's interpromotional of all things. I never, yeah, stupid. No. Yeah. Why would they be together? Well, she's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's a freaking man. That's why. Um, 
All right, it's plus good, seven for commentary. <laughs> for co- <laughs> Again, a good strong. This has been a strong season for commentary. Just mm-hmm. killer grades. All right, atmosphere. Uh, a point for the 9-11 Americana vibes with America the Beautiful to start it off. Just, you know, for all the jingoism and the bad that comes along with the good during this time period after 9-11, like those first couple weeks after were, you know, the country definitely felt unified for most. I know there was a lot of um, other bad stuff going on at a, at a ground level. Uh, for folks that were being profiled, obviously that was no good, but it was at least a feeling of like at a high macro level, like, okay, maybe we're kind of coming together as a country to figure things out a little bit and try and find some peace together. Um, and so that vibe on the show stood out. Uh, a point for the pay-per-view debut of Christian song at last, which is a kind of an underground favorite for many. Uh, but we also get the edge Rob Zombie theme here for a point for that. It makes him feel elevated. He's off of the You Think You Know Me and into uh, my Durango, number five. <laughs> um, great song, though. It's it's a classic edge song. I, I think it's he's had some great ones, too, but it's, it's yeah. up there for sure. Um, so a point for that. A point for the big pop for Undertaker and Kane. A point for RVD when he wins, gets a big pop. Pop point for Rocks, mega pop. A point for the big pop when Mike Kyoto comes out and takes out Nick Patrick yeah. <laughs> during that match. I think it's a big pop. And then Angle, this gets the Pittsburgh God level pop when he comes out and wins. So this crowd is hot, man. This this pay per view is underrated. Absolutely, yeah. This is an underrated gem of a show. Um, our only minus for atmosphere was uh, the crowd being fully checked out on uh, Saturday and Raven, and who can blame them? So plus seven for atmosphere. Like we said, this should have been flipped. That should have been in the, the death spot before the main event because the crowd was checked out on it anyway. All right. Notable moments and importance. We gave a point for this being the first pay-per-view post 9-11 and kind of everything that goes with that. A point for having the first Edge versus Christian pay-per-view match. A point for Christian winning the IC title. A point for Rhino winning the U.S. title. A point for Kurt Angle winning the world title in his hometown after 9-11 get the family the roster comes out we actually give two for that because it's such a cool moment um you know you could argue maybe it's angles peak he has some great stuff later but like maybe his number one moment in the company that kind of gets overlooked is that him up on the shoulders of his family get paraded around uh with the world title in the wake of 9 11 yeah uh for our minuses uh we've got chronic being uh jobbed out and taking <laughs> taking the blame uh being killed off and then um the uh the misappropriation of I know you want me for Stacy Keebler. I mean that's um, that's sunny and that's it. I don't actually mean for been nobody else. Four years, like come on. Different yeah, song. There's a million yeah. songs. Find one for her. I yeah. know you want me as Sunny, and that's it. Absolutely. That's it. I don't want to hear it. Anyone else? Um, the angle thing too, like him getting that treatment. It almost felt a little bit like they aped luger i mean obviously hogan had the title way longer than austin does here um but i mean austin's been champion since mania right so i mean he's had it for a while now and he's he's on tv a ton it felt like they tried to do the lex luger nitro moment where like it was a big win for the wf to take the belt from austin and have the big roster come out and celebrate so it kind of gave those vibes a little wrestlemania 10 with brett but a little bit luger nitro yeah. um in august of 97 all right, match grades we talked about was a plus five. Card structure, we gave a point for opening hot with the Hardys and the big tag title match. A point for the really good interview with the Angle family. Kind of adds to the build and atmosphere before the match. And then a point to close with the Angle family celebration. Again, back to uh, SummerSlam 93. It felt like uh, the uh, yes. interview with the, uh, <laughs> the Steiner brothers. Oh uh, Rob and sister. Scott. <laughs> Robbie, it's got yeah. Um, for our body citizen card structure, uh, we've got um, always coming down <laughs> to the Hardys and Dudleys. Um, when you got these tag teams, um, doesn't always. add an invasion vibes, it's just yeah. back to where we were, you know, at the beginning of the season. Um, Saturn Raven should have uh, been an old school style ECW kind of weapons mm-hmm. brawl that you guys talk about on a stream three way day. We haven't had any and, of those in a bit, like, even the hardcore yeah. title's been more. The Hardy RVD stuff hasn't been like that. Like this should have been like that Rhino Raven match we had. Like, give me all the plunder for this. Mm-hmm. Um, all the WWF guys are holding WCW titles, and then uh, Tajir and Rhino being uh, stuffed into the death slot. So minus one for card structure. Not great. I love uh, <laughs> Summer Seven Night Three, and the mom's like, uh, "Who knows?" <laughs> whatever to Todd. <laughs> like, whatever. I think she's like, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> no clue what the hell he's talking about. Uh, all right, rewatchability. We gave a point to uh, the Jericho RVD ladder bumps with the sick Van Daminator, and then a point for the Angle family celebration. 
Um, we've got, uh, for the minuses, the awkward RVD and Steph backstage chat. Um, mm. it felt like a talk where, like, um, somebody doesn't know how to say goodbye. Um, yeah, it was weird. Like, it it should have ended way sooner. Um, all the soft strikes and bumps in the uh, WCW tag title match. Um, yeah, that was rough to watch. Uh, we got Taz kind of be like just Joe. Um, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, he's like being all gospy. Um, you know, oh, I heard that uh, somebody's going over to uh, the WWF. Uh, yeah, it's like, why is he doing that? Well, let stupid yeah. Chavo do that or something. Like, the Taz is a killer. He's a, a human wrecking machine. Like, now he's like a Yenta at the salon. Like, what are we doing? Like, it's just. It's so weird. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, and then we got uh, Tori's, um, you know, skin of max level acting <laughs> talking to uh, Commissioner Regal. Yeah, that was a way now. I, I feel bad for Tori and Stacey. I feel like they are the top women from WCW that they bring in. Mega hot, but not really have been given the spotlight in WCW enough with the reps. She was on a lot, but never utilized in a way where, like, they tried to raise her up. And they're kind of thrown into big spots right away. Um, and it's a lot of awkward content from it. Like, they both get better as we go, especially Stacy. But for now, like, out of the gate, they're definitely shaky. So negative two for rewatchability. Uh, we had one all-time match. That was Angle versus Austin, so plus one. That gives us a total score, Marcus, of 26. So very strong showing. I think it tapered at the end. The card structure is messy. Uh, you would think there'd be more rewatchable moments, but there really wasn't. It was just kind of a churn and burn show. They just kind of went through, um, but still ends up finishing very high. I mean, at 26, that puts it at 16th all time for us. So that's, that's a strong finish. It's just below fully loaded 99. And it's actually a quarter of a point higher than King of the Ringo one, um, which would surprise me. Yeah. Um, but we know King of the Ringo one got destroyed by DDP and, and Taker. It's yeah. like, if we take that out, King of the Ringo one's probably a top fiver, uh, but just got completely crushed by that stuff. But I, th- I think this is, Probably a little overperforming um, at 26 points, I would say. I agree, especially since they seem to lost their way with the uh, invasion stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's pretty much just, you know, all the bad guys at this point are WCW, ECW, yeah. and all the good guys are in WWF. Like, it's been boiled down to, like, the laziest possible form of storytelling right. there. So, given that, and that's still, like, the whole thread throughout the company, like, I think a 26, um, also with, like, you know, the – the 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 mental space and you know the overall feeling of the country at the time with what had just happened like mm-hmm. the show definitely I think over delivers because they could have came in and and mailed in a show but you know instead they they build up to a big moment with angle and uh the rest of the show delivers for the most part all right speaking of delivering north south connection delivers to you tons of great content both audio only video only and some like this show where we do both you can check out uh all of our great content either right here on this youtube channel or search out north south connection on any pod catcher app marcus you and your buddy tim not the two man taylor come at us live uh, almost live after every major pay-per-view event or premium live event um so you know show ends within hours we got viewers choice up on the network for a quick uh thumbs up thumbs down style show kind of what's the good what's the bad what's the ugly you guys give us a sync to break down so be sure to check that out after every major show that's audio only at this time um but a lot of our shows like i said are simulcast both video and audio especially no holds barred that airs every single saturday that's uh, myself and aaron every other week we go through the uh history of every dirty title change of all time we're grading breaking down every world title change we're into uh early 1999 so you can check that out and then that rotates every saturday with also know as bar draft day. So we have uh, luminaries on. We have uh, Mr. Taylor's our draft star, Marcus, you, Jennifer Smith, Chad Campbell, Ryan Gray, Steve Riddle, all rotate in and out. Uh, we've had Steve Bennett, Keithy Langston all jump in, and uh, we do drafts. So we do every other week, just drafts. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of chaos. It's a lot of misery. Check it out. That is also audio and video as well. All right, let's get into our final show of the night, and that is No Mercy. 2001 october 21st from the savas center in st louis 15,647, 325,000 buys jim ross paul Heyman on the call and uh we talked about lit the bodies to the floor back at summer san marcus this is a very also famous uh theme song for this show and that is click click boom from saliva um whenever you mention october 2001 no mercy <laughs> i immediately think st louis Click, click, boom um, jumps in my mind. And I told you how all in we were. We had click, click, boom on, on replay in the room 
Um, oh, it's great in the dorm for sure during this month because it was just so played on TV and everything else. So it was synonymous with the show for sure. Yeah, everything's on point, man. Like the merchandise is great. The the theme songs and pay per views are great. You know the storylines. Like it, it's it's a really fun time. Start off for our Sunday night heat matches. The APA defeat Chris Canyon and Hugh Morris. Poor Canyon, uh, already down in the dumps. And Billy Kidman defeats Scotty Tuhati to retain the cruiserweight championship. Scotty's the king of heat uh, during the stretch, apparently. Uh, all right, let's get to our opening match, and that is for the WCW Tag Team Titles. Naturally, as the Hardy Boys, our WCW Tag Team Champions, uh, defeat the Hurricane and Lance Storm. We talked about Storm and Hurricane having come together. Hurricane is fully in the comic book gimmick now, all in, uh, full superhero. Mighty Molly's now with him. She's a superhero. And Citizen Storm is uh, his civilian buddy uh, that tags along. I thought this was a good match, three stars. It's kind of been in line with all of our openers from the season. It's like this is a, a very quality title match of some sort gets the crowd hyped up you get the hardys and, and helms connection from north carolina the omega days so they got some chemistry there and storm smooth at everybody so yeah commentary even points that out um yeah the omega feud which that's really cool for wf to do mm -hmm. um and yeah three for me too it's just a really solid opening contest again storm uh really coming through in these openers uh was it three four straight now mm -hmm. um yeah he's He's really delivered the goods um, in the opening match. Uh, that brings us to a forgotten about gem for me. Um, mm. And that would be Kane taking on Test. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Test is, um, he's recently like really debuted and gotten over the big boot as his yeah. finish. Um, and yeah, they, they did a great job getting that over because I mean, when he hits it, it kind of, you know, the crowd reacts like Kane just got, you know, run over by a train or something. Uh, three and a half for me. And this match is just like really impressive because it's two big dudes. And I mean, they're just tossing each other around. Um, and it's not like full cooperation. Like it's just dudes rock, like dudes being big, throwing each other around. Um, and they, they work like a really good match. Um, you might think of these two and be like, uh, no, like go out of your way to check this one out. It's, it's, I, I think it's a forgotten about match. Um, again, it's like Pete Kane and you've got test, um, getting another chance here, trying to prove a little something. Um, and yeah, they give them a couple bells and whistles to play with too. So, uh, three and a half for me. Kane is like a very good boy in 2001, but he gets dragged down by being buddies with the undertaker. So it's like a guy <laughs> kid that does well in school. Um, he's trying hard, but his best friend is just a, a malcontent and just like a near do well. Um, and like, so everyone associates that Kane is a bad kid as well. And that, I feel like that's his own one. Like he's got some really good stuff in there. He's got the, when he's alone, he's got the rumble, which is great. He's fun in the hardcore match at mania. Uh, we liked the chain match at judgment day. And he's good here with tests. His worst stuff is when he's saddled with Undertaker and tag shit. And it's like he gets lumped in. But this is good. I like this. I mean, it's a sneaky, fun little. He's even got that match with Albert on TV, which is good Yeah. Um, for the IC title. So it's like, you know, he's got a sneaky good year, but there's some bad shit in there due to Undertaker. But I went three and a quarter on this as well. It's just a big boy, Haas, you know, throwing bombs match, which you and I always do. <laughs> That song test, get to. test is like <laughs> roided out of his mind. Oh, here. God, it's he just like a maniac amazing. coming to the ring. Yeah. Oh. That song doesn't get you hyped. I have no clue what the fuck that guy's saying, but it fucking <laughs> fires me up every time I hear it. It's been like one of my highlights of watching this season. It's been that song with the test. I actually look forward to test matches. <laughs> <'cause> that's what he heard come out. Anyway, all right. Uh, next up is the opposite of a big Haas match, and that is the explosion of Tori Wilson taking on Stacey Keebler. Of course, Tori's now dating to Jerry, so she is defected over to Team WF. Um, you know, for everything we talked about with them not really being well trained or super prepared by WCW, they've been okay in the matches we've seen them in. Like, they just kind of go out and 
do their thing. This was two stars for me. It's kind of a standard women's fight in 2001. Three matches. It's a lingerie match. So whatever, you get that in there. It was fine. It's like the power plant might be better than uh, OVW. Um, <laughs> yeah, two for me as well. And I like that they used I Know You Want Me kind of as uh, the cage match music. <laughs> the thump, yes. Thump, 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 uh, <laughs> as opposed to using it for somebody's theme. And the crowd pops for the song. Like they know that's Sonny's song. Yes. You can't convince me otherwise. Which sucks um, but, because yeah, it's Sonny's it's... song, not Stacey's song. Give her something yeah, Two else. for me though. Give her this. She will soon, I guess. Actually, <laughs> although I think it's—I think he changes it by then, sadly. Yeah. Um, our next match is for the Intercontinental Title, as it is Edge regaining the title for the third time, um, defeating Christian, and this is a ladder match. Um, I went with a four. This was really, really good. Um, I think that they were conflicted between like deep personal hatred and trying to have a spectacle as well. Right. Um, that's what they know, only... right? That's yeah, what exactly. they've done all the time is these spectacle ladder matches for the last two years. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see like a little bit of the TLC, but then they're also trying to have like a razor Sean. They take some spots directly from the SummerSlam 98 ladder match too, yeah. uh, with rock and triple H. So uh, still pretty good. So four. I went for it too. It was actually better than I remembered. I remember, I thought I was like down on the whole series, uh, but I guess it's still unforgiving. That was more disappointing. I think they definitely get a little more brutal in this match. Um, I think they knew they probably under under delivered unforgiven. They wanted to step it up. So Edge gets his title back. We get you know it ends up being a one month feud really between the two of them, and a blip and Edge is right back as IC champion. So I think it's a fine way to blow off their relationship. We'll see where it goes from here with the two of them, or if they just kind of go their own way. All right, we have another very random tag team title match for the Dirty F tag titles. As the Dudley boys uh, fight off to Jerry and the Big Show, I win three stars. It's just more of the same. Big Show finds a random partner, challenges the Dudley boys, and loses. Um, I think Jerry could be used better than this. It, it, it's interesting that the Dudleys are like presented as like a top piece of the alliance, but they just have no real challenge. Because Taker and Kane have been stuck with, you know, they've been like the WF top team. And they've been with DDP and Canyon with Chronic. And that's not the Dudleys with like the Hardys and nothing. And we're sick of Dudleys Hardys. But no other team has been presented as in a way that could be a challenge to the to the Dudleys. So we just keep getting these random makeshift teams. The Big Show continues to be a loser. Um, give me someone else with Tajiri. I don't know. Maybe Tajiri and X-Pac form a, a cruiserweight alliance or something and, and come together. Or I guess Regal had already turned by now. But, um, you know, Tajiri Regal could have been fun. Um and just a big show to seems feels when he comes out, it's just like, all right. And they're fine. It's a fine match. Like mm-hmm. I guess I went three stars. I like the 3d on the buckle. Like that's cool. Um, but it's just like not very inspired. No, like I wonder if you could have done like APA versus Dudley's here. And I, I know that's more of the same from like late 99. Yeah. At least it's a little but... different though. Yeah, like you got the the you'd have at least the APA as faces and it's a different version of the APA as opposed to what we saw. Right in you know september 99 um but yeah not feel, not really feeling it it's still three and like that's off the strength of like tajiri um is really good and then um dudley's hit the what's up head buzz so that's always good for me too um we have uh just kind of a special like attraction style match mm-hmm. which always like like these random like almost like a bonus match um as we got undertaker taking on booker t and they do a good job of um, presenting this match where it's like WWF's like pound for f- pound for pound like best guy um, versus WCW's like pound for pound best guy. Um, so I went to three point two five. Um, Booker Booker has his work cut out for him. Um, it feels like he's definitely wrestling a little bit slower than what we've seen. Um, having seen him in there with The Rock. Um, like those two dudes are athletic here. He's slowing it down a little bit for Undertaker. Um, but this is also the best Undertaker that we've seen, um, I think, all season. So uh, 3.25 for me. Same, 3.25. It, it felt on par with Kane and Test, which is probably an overperformance for Taker um, to match Kane's solo output. It's also kind of sneaky still a tag feud because Booker T and Test have begun teaming um, mm-hmm. is within the alliance. So we kind of split the two teams. I guess we could have had a tag match here with Taker and Kane versus Booker and Tess, but instead we split them up. 
I think it makes Booker look important that he gets the big dog, uh, gets taker on this. So it elevates him. But again, it's like at some point Booker needs to win one of these. Like he's consistently lost since coming in. He's been presented as a top guy, but he's now lost two straight matches to rock and one to taker. I think this is one where you could have Booker go over. Like taker has been presented Absolutely. super strong throughout the invasion. Like, a loss to Booker, even if Tess comes in and hooks his leg to something, like to get Booker the the on win paper mm-hmm. over Undertaker. I mean, you know, Tess comes out, kicks him with the boot. Like no one's taking that. All right, three and a quarter there. Uh, let's get to our next match, which is for the WCW World Title, and it's an inter uh, intra promotional match as The Rock defends against Chris Jericho. Jericho had been making it well known that he was. Felt like he was being ignored and overlooked as wanting the world title. Uh, and they really lean in on the story in this, that he's a choker. He's never broken through and won the big one. Can he finally do it here? And he does. Jerry Jericho finally wins a world title. Beats The Rock to kick off their very well-remembered classic feud. Um, it's WWF versus WWF. And that kind of plays into this too, because people are kind of aggravated, pissed at Jericho for creating a rift in the team against the Alliance. Uh, this match definitely holds up. Well, I went four and a half their entire series. Um, is just really, really good stuff. And I lied. That action tape actually goes into late one because their raw match is on that tape. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's on the DVD actually as an extra, um, the action extras, bonus dvd features are awesome and that's one of them and their raw match i think is actually the best of their series because they have this one they get the raw match they got vengeance and the rumble mm. um and i remember them i'm pretty sure that the raw match is is the best okay um i really like this match and i really love the build in this where they actually highlight this title is so important for jericho it's like this validation he never received in wcw because he never had the shot at the title um, which Jared points out in commentary and same time for rock, it's a world title and they kind of like present the heritage of the WCW title. And it's kind of in the spirit of the NWA title. Um, so it's important for rock too, outside of just, you know, being, being a, you know, a world title. Um, so 4.75 for me. And I really like that. Um, like if you look, uh, with like a magnifying glass, you can see these two, like just calling a lot of this on the fly and just feeling it out there. And, um, it's always kind of beautiful to to see a wrestling match done like that. Um, Mm -hmm. just two pros, the chemistry these two have, I think is, is underrated and forgotten. Um, I could have done without the finish with Stephanie getting involved and understand like, it's still a story beat, but um, I like how they had Rock present the smoking gun to Jericho mm-hmm. at the end. And yeah, Jericho's yeah. like, yeah, man, like I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll do it again. I need it to win. Yeah. Um, Mandela effect myself on this. So it's, I guess it's not on the action bonuses. I thought it was, it's good. I know it's on some DVD I have, but here are the matches on the action DVD. It's Booker T versus Kurt Angle from SmackDown for the WCW title. Oh, okay. Triple H versus Jeff Hardy for the IC title on SmackDown in April. Jericho that's Triple great. H for the IC title on SmackDown. Um, that's where Triple H wins it. Uh, Edge, Christian, and Rhino versus the Dudleys uh, from March on SmackDown. Angle, Austin, a Raw in 01, which is great. Um, Austin Rock uh, in the cage when uh, Triple H turns. Yeah. And then Austin Jericho on June 4th. And that, that's just the matches. Then it has all of the great uh, other stuff as well. So I'm trying to look if that's the fill listing. I could have swore that Rock Jericho match was on there, but it must be on something else. I got to anyway. seek this out and see if it's uh, available, <laughs> available out there through uh, any resources. Maybe somewhere. If not, I might be able to dump it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why I thought. I thought Rock Jericho was on there. I know it's on something, but not that, I guess. But that tape is awesome. It's awesome. Well, what else is awesome uh, is our main event. It is a triple threat match. It is for the World Wrestling Federation Championship as the paranoid Stone Cold Steve Austin defends and retains successfully against Kurt Angle and Rob Van Dam. Um this is a really good triple threat match. Um, 4.25 for me, but um, I'd be lying if I said I was not bummed with uh, the conclusion of this match. Um, 
the wrong kid died. Um, it should have been Rob Van Dam here. Instead, he eats the stunner and takes the pinfall loss. Um, and I think we'll talk about it when we get to uh, our categories. So I'll save it for then. But uh, outside of that, this is still a really awesome triple threat match. Yeah. Um, I was trying to look really quick to see. Because do you remember when that match, that Raw match was with The Rock and Jericho? It had to be right after, right? I th- was it before? Did they have one before? Uh, and- it, was on, it was on, oh no, wait, it's No Mercy. I thought it was after No Mercy. Did they have one before this on Raw? No, I'll have to try and find it. I thought they had one before, and then it's the No Mercy match, and then it's... No, it's 11-5, so it's after this. I was going to say, okay, it's Survivor Series. Like, it's it's in the build-up to Survivor Series. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rock and Chris Jericho. It's on, oh, it's on the Rebellion DVD as an extra. I think I have that DVD, okay. too. Rebellion on one. I knew it was on some DVD as, like, a hidden gem extra. That goes 15 minutes, Rock. Rock. That's when Rock wins a belt back. I was on Raw. Um, all right, the main event. Yes, I went four and a quarter. I think it really holds up well. It's a huge foray for RVD to solidify himself as a main event star. I like the build where they played up like RVD is kind of, I don't give a shit about you or the Alliance. Like, I'm just going to win the belt. It's a chance for me to win. And why can't I be the guy? It's it's classic RVD, right? He's like, why not me? Why you? Um, Austin's paranoia is at an all-time high. It feels a little bit like the swan song of Angle um, in the whole world title picture, but not really because he's kind of back in it quickly after. But it feels like he came up short. Now three out of four times, and and even over the summer a couple times too. Um, this match infamously led to me and Kevin Kelly getting into an argument on uh, Place to Be podcast because I argued that if RVD wasn't going to win, he shouldn't be in the match. Mm. Uh, he argued that him just being in the match made him a star. I disagree. He's a star. I, I think he didn't need to lose here. I think you keep him out and keep building him, or you give him the title. Um, I get that they were marching toward Austin Rock as being the blow off to the evasion. Um, RVD never gets this hot again. He just doesn't. Like by the winter, he's already c- cooled a bit. He's still over. He's still a star. But this is it. Like in retrospect, given where Austin Rock goes and where Jericho becomes, like I think RVD winning here and becoming the guy heading into Mania. You got both titles anyway. You don't need to do the undisputed if you want to keep two and have Jericho have one as well. Um, I know they had Triple H on the horizon. So they wanted to keep him um, sizzling. So I guess, but I think it is a world where you keep both belts and you have Triple H Jericho for one title and then RVD, whoever, Rock, or I guess you have Rock Hogan, RVD Austin for the world title at at WrestleMania, you know? Yeah, I think it's interesting you bring up uh, Triple H because, um, I mean, it's been linked. Like Jericho's talked about it in his book um, and like podcasts and stuff that like, his pitch was, you know, since it was going to be him and Triple H at Mania, was to have, um, you know, the, the the angle with Stephanie and, like, somebody with long hair and a ponytail and thinking it was going to be RVD and having him in that mix and Triple H not going for it. And I think we'll see at the Royal Rumble that, uh, you know, Triple H, that ovation at MSG was an all-time moment. But even by the time he gets to the Rumble, he may not be the people's choice. Um RVD's hot for a while. And again, he's never going to be as hot as he is here, but it's, it's a missed opportunity. They had somebody in house. They mm-hmm. were able to finally get, you know, one of the best outside stars in he's locked in. He's not going anywhere. There's nowhere else to go. You've won. You've got the right. talent. Everybody's on the same team. Now, why not strap up RVD here? You've already shown that you can rebook things and, and switch the title on TV and you didn't need Austin Rock at Survivor Series to be champions to still end, no. the, end the show. Like, that didn't need to happen. They could still be the two top dogs. Yeah. Um, why not make RVD here? Yeah, I think RVD should have won. Um, put the rocket on him while he's hot. And again, he cools off. Like, he's by December, he's like kind of just a guy on the roster um, and not this hot again. So, yeah. And it felt like they listened to the crowd. I, all right. He's had three fantastic pay-per-view mm-hmm. matches. He's a lot better of a promo than I think he gets um, yeah. credit for. As long as he's got a story and it's something good, like he's he's a good talker. He's realistic. Um, 
so they they throw you know our guy into the main event but i think this is the first instance that i can really pinpoint where it's a lot of what we get now where it's okay we'll put your guy in the main event Mm -hmm. but we're gonna beat him because the plan is the plan and think about it he doesn't get the world title until 2006 i mean i think it's crazy like how hot he is here and just how much they end up squandering him um you know they kind of heat him back up a year later but even then, it's not the same as he was here. No. He felt completely different and meteoric. You didn't. You weren't playing Austin Rock for Mania, I don't think. Um, no. Right. So, like, what are we doing? Like, like, like we said, you could still do Triple H Jericho. You don't need the title. You can make it a blood feud and have someone else win the Rumble and fight RVD for the belt at Mania. Um. Anyway, or this. Yeah. This chance was two years earlier. Uh, all right, so total match score, Marcus. Uh, this is like an all-time in-ring pay-per-view, sneakily enough. Seven point seven five. Wow, uh, it's it's a great in-ring show. I mean, it's it's an awesome pay-per-view in the ring for sure. This whole year, for as maligned as one gets for some of the um, rudderless booking in the spring and then the mishandling of a lot of pieces of the evasion. In ring, it never dips. In ring, it's fantastic. The roster is stacked. Every pay per view has tremendous matches, top to bottom. Uh, TV was having uh, you know bangers every week, so there's some great stuff on there. All right, let's get to our categories. So, Bill, we give a point for the rise of RVD to a main event star. He fades out of caring about the invasion, and just wants to get the belt. A point for Hurricane, fully formed now. With Molly Holly, he's got his new theme song. He's won the European title. A point for Test, messing with the Undertaker to step up uh, and challenge Kane. A point for Tori leaving the Alliance, thanks to Jerry's love angle. Stacy becomes the Duchess of Dudley villain there as well. And they go to war. A point for Edge and Christian's feud continuing. You get the title change. You get the familiar gimmick. A point for Jericho trying to prove he can win the big one. A point for Mick Foley returning as commissioner, replaces William Regal, and he inserts RVD to the title match to cause havoc. Of course, Regal had helped um, Austin regain the world title from Kurt Angle on TV. Uh that whole night was kind of maligned, if you remember. They hyped it ahead of time as like it's going to be an all time raw. Like they kind of gave it to Tony Schiavone. Tune in. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be a, uh, one of the most memorable raws of all time. And it was Regal turning um, finally and joining the Alliance, which I always thought felt kind of weak. Like what a loser turning like two weeks before the thing dies or whatever, <laughs> like six weeks or whatever before it dies. But um, he goes. So Foley comes back as Kamish. Yeah. Um... Stacy Keebler, Duchess of Dudleyville, put her in the Hall of Fame that night. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for our minuses, we've got Angle's title reign uh, being quickly kneecapped with a pointless regal turn, like you just talked about. Uh, Christian joining the Alliance was pretty pointless. Uh, Spike and Molly break up. What? Uh, that's sad to see. Another odd tag team title match on uh, the pay per view. Um, Big Show continues to be aimless. Uh, just stuck in these these you know random partner spots, and then uh, Vince being off TV while his company is under attack was a uh, a weird booking thing. I don't know if there is like a specific reason he was off TV, yeah. Um, but again, it loses that tension of like you know war, which is what they're trying to go for. Um, and instead, it's it's more so like Alliance trying to prove that they belong. Like we've we've totally lost the plot. Yeah, it's gotten washed over. They've, you could tell by this point they were just trying to fill it out to Survivor Series for sure. Like just trying to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just kind of limping, they're limping along inside the angle at this point. They're lucky they get the talent and the matches to kind of carry it. Um, but you know, we didn't really talk about it either. Like this is really where what takes off. Um, it started after SummerSlam. Uh, I think it's during the Austin Appreciation it's, as well. I think is where it it's, starts. I think it's the SmackDown in Albany, and I think it's um. The Spike and Molly segment. They're at the stairwell. Yeah, yeah. And Austin, you little, little stupid girlfriend. What? I think it's there. Well, and also he does it with Taz is one of the first big ones, which I think is in the mm-hmm. appreciation night when he he has everyone turn on Taz and whip him and everything. I think he does it there to him. So that's where it's starting to pick up for sure. But All right. So that's a plus two for Bill. For commentary, a good note by JR that Kane debuted in this exact building exactly yeah. four years ago to the month. Uh, a point for the good back and forth all night on RVD and where he lies. Jericho's a choke artist, balance of power in the evasion. So we give two points for that all in. Uh, just a good back and forth between the two. A point for Heyman saying that Jerry Briscoe likes to wrestle lingerie as well, which is a funny callback. 
A point for Heyman telling JR to try Stacker 2 so he can get lighter on his feet. Uh, a point for JR doing really well all night, continuing to use the WCW ECW accomplishments, putting over the Alliance members. And a point for the pay per view debut of Booger Red. <laughs> yeah, it's notorious uh, for the end of the season with WrestleMania 18. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's quite the surprise to hear Booger Red. Uh, yeah, I didn't think that started until he cut the hair. Yeah, uh, but it's here. Uh, for our minuses, we've got a creepy old man commentary during uh, the lingerie yeah. match. and then, No uh, king, but the creepiness continues. And, yeah, maybe JR is a problem. And uh, JR calls Stacey Keebler stupid in a backhanded way. And for being such a nice lady, that was that was not nice. That is, I like that little shot. All right, plus five for commentary. Let's get to atmosphere. We give a point for click, click, boom, of course. A point for the huge pop for the Hardys winning. A point for Edge's win in celebration. A point for the big pop. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, part of that is Rob Zombie blasting while he wins. A uh, point for the Undertaker's entrance, which is awesome. A point for the big pop for The Rock, and a point for the crowd losing it when Vince comes out and attacks Shane during the main event. For our minuses, we have uh, Christian getting a non-pop. Even JR has to cover on a commentary. Um, disappointing and questionable crowd reaction when uh, Austin pins RVE. Um, yeah. That right there tells you. They're confused. Yeah. 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 Why not pin Angle? That's what bothered me. Like, he's already took the loss. Angle's bulletproof. Like, RVD should have stayed pristine. Like, he did not need to get pinned by Austin in this match. Yep. All right, that's a plus four for atmosphere. For moments, we give a point for Kane chokes him and Nick Patrick three times, kind of paying back all the bullshit of Patrick throughout the invasion. A point for the pay-per-view, pay-per-view debut of Never Gonna Stop. A point for Edge winning the IC title. And a point for Jericho winning the WCW title to finally break through. We actually gave that two. Uh, it's a pretty big moment for him historically yeah. to finally win the big one. Yeah, again, they did really, really well uh, building mm-hmm. up that title for Jericho. So it really felt like a lot when he won it. Um, for our minuses, it's our Mandela effect rhino as he lingers <laughs> yes. into October. Uh, he looks like the forgotten about Alliance member. Mm-hmm. He even talks about he's here to gain respect for the Alliance. Um, he just again, won the U.S. Like, title like last month. What are we doing? Yeah, he talks about oh, Alliance isn't a joke. Here to mm-hmm. gain respect with Regal. Like, what are we doing with Rhino? Um, yeah. He's they've yeah they've they've fumbled him from where he was in the summer, uh, and then Booker gets jobbed in a winnable match against Undertaker, uh, and it's a you know it's a pretty much a carry job by him the mm-hmm. whole way, uh, bumping around for Taker, and uh, of course RVD getting his water shut off. All right, so that's a plus two. I wonder if they knew Rhino was hurt already, and they were like waiting on like diagnosis or like next steps, so they kind of threw him out there, but. They weren't sure if he was going to be doing anything, perhaps. So they had to like kind of protect him, maybe a little, if possible. Because I mean, he's got to be done after this. He's not a Survivor Series, and he's yeah, I'm pretty sure he's on the shelf right after. So it just sucks because he had so much promise early on in the invasion. Like he looked awesome. I mean, yeah, and even before earlier, that. Yeah. Yeah, in our season, he's getting more and more over with every match he gets. Yeah, he's been great. Great part of one. Uh, all right, 7.75 for the matches. Let's get to card structure. We give a point for starting hot with the Hardys tag, a point for the good slot for the lingerie match. Really good, t- you know, well done for that type of gimmick. It fit well in that spot on the card. A point for the uh, smart ladder match for Edge and Christian. Go to the gimmick they know to help pick up their quality a little bit after the disappointing match in September. Um, and a point for stacking the top three matches to go home strong. So we get the three big boys closing us out. Uh, our uh, only minuses are uh, both Stephanie and Vince getting involved in both of the world title matches. Yeah. Um, so either we bundle that or leave it individually, but either way, it's a minus two. Yeah, it's just unneeded. Like, enough McMahon stuff. <laughs> like, so let's have the matches. Uh, so that's a two for card structure. Rewatchability, uh, just an all time love it, Austin moment. So coach goes to interview him. Austin's in the locker room. Deborah comes out. Coach asks a question. Deborah asks the question. Austin yells the answer. Tell him I'm not going to talk to him right now. And Deborah fucking repeats everything he says. Coach is trying not to break. Um, it is so fucking awesome. It's so funny. Austin is so loud. He must have been dying in that locker room. No. Tell him I don't give a shit about Rob Van Dam. Tell him he's so cool Steve Austin says. He doesn't care about Rob Van Dam. Tell Kurt Angle's a piece of trash. <laughs> so good. Tell the Vince McMahon's a bigger piece of trash. It's so good. It is. It shows problem. you that Austin is still delivering this late in this run. Like we're a mm. month out before this run, this epic heel run of 2001 for Steve Austin is over. Mere weeks from this, and like he's still delivering gold, um, owning this character. Uh, a point for Kane throwing our boy Test over the top rope. Awesome. <laughs> 
throws him right over the top. Uh, Edge, disgusting concerto on top of the ladders. Just a mm-hmm. finish to destroy Christian, which is nasty. And a point for a rock bottom to the table on Jericho by The Rock. So a lot of cool rewatchable spots on this show. Yeah, uh, for our minuses, uh, we got Charles Robinson uh, caught in a hard position, um, poorly looking away while Jericho's trying to like the slide chair gets the stuck in the rope. ring, but it gets stuck in like the apron, yeah. um, the ring skirt. Um, so and, he can't. He's trying to push uh, it yeah, out. So Charles is like kind of looking like this. He's kind of it, it was uh, yeah. Um, so plus three for rewatchability. We got two all time matches in Jericho Rock and Austin Angle RVD. And Marcus, this has to be like one of the seasons with the most all-time matches. Like we have like two every show. Mm-hmm. What a run. Uh, so that's plus two there. It gives us a total score of 27.75. So very strong. It is a top 13 show for us. Just edging out Survivor Series 1992. Uh, half a point behind TakeOver New York. So that's a pretty good company um, right there. It's, you know, Less than a point below Royal Rumble 20, uh, 2000, a full point behind Judgment Day 01, a full point behind Money in the Bank 11. It's above TakeOver War Games 2, so it's well regarded. I mean, it has some great matches, some really memorable moments, some great build. Again, just some of the card structure negatives and some of the, the moments and atmosphere that take away from certain spots is what hurts it. But overall, it's a classic show. Yeah, there's maybe three shows, and they're all from this season in our like top 15 ish area that I wouldn't have expected to be here. Mm -hmm. And they are like backlash judgment day. And now no mercy have all. See, I I have it flipped with unforgiven. I would have thought unforgiven would be lower. Um, I remembered no mercy being really good. I think because I remembered the rock Jericho and the main event being great. Um, I, I, Unforgiven is the one that surprised me, but I'm with you on Backlash and Judgment Day. Those finished higher than I would have thought, too. It's been an awesome season. I mean, everything is... Mm-hmm. What's our lowest show? I mean, take out the, the UK show. It's. I mean, is yeah. it King of the Ring crazy enough? Or well, um, Oh, no, Invasion. Did, uh, invasion. Invasion, yeah. I mean, everything is top 32 if you take out the UK show. And Invasion is surprising because for a lot of people, that's like a an all-timer show. Yeah. All right, you want to quickly give our... Top 10. I, mean, I can tell you we've done 86 shows. Uh, our bottom show is over the limit 2011 at negative nine. So that's the spread to our top. Uh, it's uh, 2000, some 2001 is our top at 39. So it's a 40 point spread between first and last. Uh, you want to go through our top 10 though? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, starting off with Judgment Day 2001 with a total of 28.75. All right. Tied with that, but breaking the tie due to the best match is Money in the Bank 11, 28.75. Backlash 2001 with a 29.25. All right. Above that in seventh place is Royal Rumble 2016 with 32. At six is WrestleMania 21 with a 33.5. Uh, just about that, SummerSlam 2015, 35.25. The Royal Rumble 2005, the double quad tear with a 36.5. Uh, top three shows, all SummerSlams. Number three, SummerSlam 99 with 38.25. <clears throat> SummerSlam 1992 with a 38.25. Tiebreaker given to uh, Mr. Hitman and British Bulldog. It's bizarre. And our number <laughs> one show, SummerSlam 2001, 39 points. All right. <laughs> I think we passed the test here tonight, buddy. Another show in the books. We're going to continue this epic season in two weeks. Uh, the end of the invasion already upon us. Survivor Series 2001. And then we'll come out of the shower with J.R. Ewing on Dallas for Vengeance 2001 to end the year. Um, that next night of Raw is always so surreal to me. If you watch that, the night after Survivor Series where it's just like everything's back to normal. It's so weird <laughs> the way they do it. <laughs> They legit. I'm surprised they didn't have Vince coming out of the fucking shower. Like, like I'm really shocked they didn't just go all in and be like, you know, they were meta enough at that time to kind of do stuff like that. But yeah, been a fun six months. Uh, back, back to normal. normal. I lo- yeah, I like how before we close, I like how they, like I remember they kind of put the belts on everybody to yep. like explain like, okay, these WCW guys are going to be on yeah. on WWF to kind of explain away yeah. uh, why certain people are going to be around. So we'll get into all that in our next episode for sure. And 
already closing in. I mean, we're a few episodes away from another season of the book. So, uh, but we're enjoying the ride on this one for sure. Check out everything at North South Connection. Like we talked about, we have a lot of video exclusive content here on our YouTube channel, but a lot of shows too are simulcast, both video and audio. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, North South Connection. Search it out. Until then, continue to live your life above replacement level. Take care. Talk to you in two weeks.